Every time you jump on a Zoom call, every time you FaceTime your family, every time you hear someone's voice through WhatsApp, you're using technology that wouldn't exist without a black woman engineer whose name almost nobody knows. While history loves to celebrate the men who built the internet, the cables and protocols and servers, there's a different story that rarely gets told. It's the story of how the internet stopped being just a place for emails and websites and became something alive, something that could carry our voices, our faces, our real-time conversations across the world. And at the center of that transformation was Dr. Marion Crow. The genius who transformed the internet and kept the world connected when the pandemic shut the planet down. Marion Croak is the engineer, inventor, tech pioneer who was with AT&T when she created the technology behind Skype, Zoom, Wi-Fi phone calls, video conferencing. She is known as the voice over internet protocol, and that's just one of her many accomplishments. She has over 200 patents to her name, and last year she became one of the of one of only two black women inducted into the National Inventors Hall of Fame. A black woman who had to fight twice as hard for half the recognition. Born in 1955 in New York City, Marion wasn't your typical future engineer. She didn't come from money or privilege, but she had something better, curiosity that wouldn't quit. While other kids played outside, young Marion followed plumbers and electricians around her house watching them fix things, asking questions until she understood how everything worked. Her father, who only had an elementary school education, built her a chemistry set from scratch. That homemade lab became her playground. By 1982, fresh out of grad school with a PhD in social psychology and data science, Marion landed at Bell Labs, which later became at an AMT. This was a big deal for any engineer, but especially for a black woman in the early 80s. The tech world back then? Picture rooms full of white men in suits, making decisions about the future while people who looked like Marion were barely in the building. She started in the Human Factors Division, studying how technology could actually help people instead of just existing for its own sake. And that's when she saw something that nobody else was seeing. The internet existed, sure. You could send emails, you could look at basic websites, but it was clunky, slow, and it definitely couldn't handle your voice or video. Meanwhile, everyone was still using regular phone lines for calls, which worked fine but were completely separate from the digital world. Marion had a vision that seemed crazy at the time. She believed that one day, your phone calls and your internet would be the same thing. That you could talk to someone through data, not through copper wires, and that voices could become digital packets traveling alongside emails and web pages. This was voice over internet protocol or VoIP, and in the late 80s and early 90s, people at AT and Amp T thought she was out of her mind. Here's the thing about being a black woman in tech you don't just have to be right. You have to be right, prove it, prove it again, and then watch someone else get credit for your idea. Marion has talked openly about how she'd present her work in meetings and be ignored. She'd watch men repeat her exact ideas minutes later and suddenly everyone would listen. She faced skepticism at every turn. People called VoIP technology Toilic. They said nobody would ever want it. They dismissed her vision as impossible, but Marion didn't quit. She kept pushing, researching, and building. And slowly, the technology started working. Not just working, but working so well that AT and AMPT couldn't ignore it anymore. The company that had doubted her ended up merging its entire voice networking and internet protocol engineering teams. And guess who they put in charge of 2,000 engineers? Marion Croak. Over her 32 years at AT and AMT, she filed more than 200 patents. To put that in perspective, that's more patents than most people have ideas. Half of them were related to VoIP technology, the stuff that now powers every single platform you use to talk to people online. Skype, Zoom, FaceTime, WhatsApp, Discord, every voice call you've ever made on your computer or through an app exists because of the groundwork she laid. But here's where her story gets even better. In 2003, American Idol was having a problem. Millions of fans were calling in to vote, and the phone system kept crashing. Marion and her team came up with a solution, let people text their votes instead. It worked so well that it changed everything. Two years later, Hurricane Katrina hit New Orleans. Marion sat at home watching the devastation on TV, watching people drown, watching a city fall apart, and feeling that same helplessness we all felt. 
But unlike most of us, she could actually do something about it. She thought about that American Idol texting system and had an idea. What if people could donate to disaster relief the same way? Within months, she developed text to donate technology. After Katrina, it raised $130,000. That might not sound huge, but it was proof of concept. Then in 2010, Haiti got hit by a massive earthquake. Using Marion's technology, people could text Haiti to a number and instantly donate $10. That campaign raised $43 million. $43 million from people's phones. Because a black woman engineer saw suffering and refused to be helpless. Think about that for a second. She didn't just change how we communicate. She changed how we help each other in emergencies. Every text to donate campaign since then, every quick way to send money during a crisis, that's her legacy too. In 2014, Marion left at an AMP-T and joined Google as vice president of engineering. Now she's working on bringing internet access to developing countries, leading research on responsible artificial intelligence, and fighting for racial justice in tech. She's also working to get more young women, especially black girls, into engineering. In 2022, almost 40 years after she started her career, Marion Croak was finally inducted into the National Inventors Hall of Fame. Thank you so much. I want to first extend my thanks to my three wonderful children. They have been my source of inspiration and they renewed my creativity and they continue to do so each day. So thank you for being here with me. I appreciate it. I hope that my induction serves to inspire others and that it opens the door for other very talented people like Dr. Bath and myself. I want to thank NIF and my sponsors, and I want to congratulate all the other conductees, inductees. <laughs> thank you so much and enjoy the evening. She became one of the first two black women ever honored in the organization's nearly 50-year history. Let that sink in. 50 years of celebrating inventors, and it took that long to recognize a black woman, even one with over 200 patents who literally transformed how billions of people communicate. That delay tells you everything you need to know about who gets remembered and who gets erased. History has always been written by people in power, and for too long, that meant the stories of black women in tech were buried, dismissed, or credited to someone else. Katherine Johnson had to wait until she was in her 90s before Hollywood told her story. Dorothy Vaughn and Mary Jackson were almost lost to history completely. Shirley Ann Jackson made breakthroughs that gave us collar ID and fiber optics, but most people have never heard her name. The pattern is clear. Black women do the work, make the breakthroughs, change the world, and then watch history move on without them. Not because their work wasn't important, but because the people writing the history books didn't think they mattered. But here's what gives me hope. We're starting to fix this. Slowly, painfully slowly, but it's happening. Marion's story is getting told. Young black girls can see her and know that they belong in tech too. That they can be inventors, that their ideas are valuable. Because the truth is, innovation has never been just white men in labs. It's been everyone, all along. The internet as we know it today, this living, breathing network that connects us all, was built by countless hands. And among those hands were black women like Marion Croak who didn't just contribute, they transformed everything. So the next time you make a video call, remember her. The next time you text a donation to help someone in need, remember her. Every voice traveling through invisible lines of code carries her fingerprints. Dr. Marion Croak changed how the world communicates, and it's time we all knew her name. If this story inspired you, there's another one waiting that'll blow your mind even